So, good morning, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. In the next uh, 50 minutes or so, I will try to clarify why green bonds have come to play an important role in discussion on uh, what is green and what is green finance. And uh, my core thesis here is that uh, since capital markets cannot allocate uh, capital efficiently without alternatives uh, that are described in a precise and comparable manner, capital markets have in fact pushed forward the debate on how to measure in a reliable manner environmental benefits and uh, risks. So um, the first point that uh, needs to be made here is that um, Everybody has heard about uh, the important figures that are required in order to put uh, our economies on a sustainable path. So you cannot do that, you cannot raise sufficient capital if you do not make recourse to mainstream capital markets. If you want to maximize the spectrum of potential investors, you have to keep things simple. So you have to keep risk low, and this is the reason why the exponential development of the market in the past few years has been determined by growing volumes of issuance of green use of proceeds bonds. So not project bonds, but green use of proceeds bonds, where the investor is not exposed to the risk of the underlying projects, but the risk remains with the issuer uh, in general terms. The second element is, of course, that products must get, be kept simple as well. And this is the reason why plain vanilla bonds have, are behind that kind of development. The third thing is that you have to keep ideas simple. So how do you establish this link between the funds uh, um, that are collected with green bonds and the eligible projects? At the EIB, we do it by booking uh, those funds into a separate treasury portfolio, by reducing the uh, size of this portfolio uh, on a pari passu basis with the eligible disbursements. So the treasury portfolio de facto becomes a performance indicator. And the third element is that we commit to a high degree of transparency on, what, on how actual disbursements are performed. And this is a very important point because there is always a difference between what you promise to finance and what you finance in practice. And the second element, and this is something that has been driven effectively by investors, you commit to a high degree of transparency on the expected impact of environmental impact of the projects that receive allocations from the bonds. So there are two other elements that I would like to highlight. Uh, at the EIB, we have a focus on renewable energy and energy efficiency on institutional and historic grounds. But in fact, this kind of approach can be applied to any area of sustainability, and most importantly, it is the issuer who is in the driving seat. And this is a very important element because green bonds have often been described as a kind of a, you know, uh, an approach opposed to ESG approach. No, the difference is simply in the concreteness of the approach. If you have an ESG approach, you want to measure everything at the same time. But with green bonds, effectively the issuer is in a position to decide what it does well already and establish a constructive dialogue with markets based on a high degree of transparency on that area. So if you look at the development of uh, the volumes of issuance in the past uh, few years, you can see uh, mainly three things. The first thing is that there is a, an increasing, a strong and increasing uh, uh, demand for this higher degree of transparency and for this kind of bonds. The second thing that you can see is that the two motors of this development are Europe and Asia, essentially China. And the third element is that there is still a long mile, a long way to go, because the volumes of issuance as of today is less than 1% of the total volume of issuance in the markets. So um, there is also, however, um, a more qualitative uh, appreciation of this uh, uh, development that I just described. And here you see the value of the interaction of markets and policies. Well, the establishment of this link between markets and policies, first of all, creates a disciplining mechanism. When you have an external scrutiny of what you do, you want to do it best. Uh, in 2014, when the EIB all of a sudden saw its first uh, benchmark uh, green bond trespass the two, billion, uh, the 2 billion mark, we decided to undergo a detailed due diligence of our administration. It took us one year very complex process, but we were able to provide 
an upgrade at the beginning of 2015. The second element, however, is also competition and peer pressure. If you do something, you want uh, to see it recognized by markets. And this extended the due diligence beyond the EIB itself. And the first thing that you want to do when investors ask you, for example, for GAG emission calculations and estimates is to make sure that others do not calculate things in a less conservative way that you do, because otherwise you have misperception in the market. So we found out projects, and all of a sudden in the capital market uh, department that I represent here, we became aware of the fact that science, there are fundamental reasons, if you will, for lack of clarity in these areas, because you do not have shared definitions, you do not have shared report, reporting principles, shared metrics, not even in the GAG emission area that is the pillar of the global accord on climate change. And this is what effectively pushed us towards asking for more comparability. So in a nutshell, uh, our bonds were launched in 2007 exactly with the main motivation to uh, involve markets via a high degree of accountability and precision and description of what we would deliver in the context of EU Energy Action Plan. And since the end of 2016, we have engaged ourselves actively on behalf also of the European Commission in the area of um, the clarification of uh, what is green, effectively. Now, what is uh, green finance then? You find a definition in the G20 Green Finance Synthesis Report of September 2019. So uh, investments that provide environmental benefits in the broader context of environmental sustainable development. But it did not become clear to markets until last year that in fact, Sustainability has different dimensions. This is a scheme proposed by the UNEP inquiry. And that in particular, environmental issues do not only cover climate, but also other environmental objectives, like biodiversity, conservation of natural resources, pollution prevention, and control. So the main issue here, once again, is lack of clarity. And the G20 Green Finance uh, Synthesis Report highlights that, however, more clarity does not mean a one-size-fits-all approach. What you need is to agree internationally comparable indicators that permit you to clarify and compare the decisions that are made locally across jurisdictions so that, in fact, markets can be left free to make their own decisions. How can this work in theory? Well, by realizing that a classification has essentially three dimensions, a list of activities, a list of objectives, and indeed those primary indicators that are supposed to measure the major contributions, the primary contributions of activities to policy objectives. This is important because then what becomes the objectives is a conceptual framework that permits to share a classification terminology and a classification approach, but permits different standards to co-live together and be compared so what does this bring in practice? Well, the fact, first of all, that policymakers in this kind of framework are supposed to clarify policy signals, which are the objectives that are pursued, which are, what are the activities that uh, contribute to those objectives, what are the thresholds that are compatible with national priorities. The other element is, of course, that you clarify what information needs to be put at the disposal of markets by issuers when they list a new transaction. Yeah? So both on an exempted and on an exposed basis, with the idea that this all can create a better interface between the preferences of investors and issuers. So what have we, do, what have we done together with uh, the International Institute for Green Finance directed by Professor Wang um, on behalf of the China Green Finance uh, Committee? At the, at the end of 2016, indeed, um, the Commission, the European Commission, started to look at these matters with a high degree of uh, uh, priority and created a high-level expert group on sustainable finance that the EIB was asked to attend and contribute to. We wanted to provide the discussions with a solid material basis and based on the market developments that I illustrated before where China and the European Union are the motors of the development of the green bond market, we effectively mapped together the uh, China catalog uh, that we use in China to determine which projects are eligible for allocations from green bonds. And then we extended, we used this mapping effectively uh, as a basis for discussions with different market constituencies. In November last year at COP23, we, we published a joint white paper on the need for common language in green finance. 
that basically legitimated a concrete technical proposal by EIB's technical experts to the HLEC in the area of climate change mitigation. This proposal is now being used as a showcase for the um, discussions that are going to take place within uh, a technical expert group that the Commission is forming to fill this uh, uh, classification approach with concrete details. So the final report of the HLEG has uh, um, indeed retained these core ideas, the clear separation of uh, uh, activities from objectives, uh, and list of activities and objectives that are compatible with the uh, activities and objectives that are mostly used uh, in the market uh, uh, at this point. So on the 8th of March this year, the Commission has published an EU action plan that has highlighted that the Commission has retained the idea that the taxonomy, the classification aspect, is crucial uh, for the development of uh, measure, legislative measures, binding compulsory legislative measures within Europe in order to take this market and more in general green finance uh, forward. Uh, the idea has also been retained that you need a kind of step-by-step -step, uh, approach. And in fact, the Commission has announced a first legislative proposal for the first quarter of uh, uh, 2018. Uh, these uh, legislative proposals were effectively uh, the second quarter of, of this year, were published last week. And they have, again, confirmed that the recommendations of the HLEC have been taken on board. And as you can see, and in particular by the scheme that... Uh, has been put uh, um, in the annex of the action uh, plan, the Commission intends to make this taxonomy compulsory on member states when they basically legislate on requirements uh, for uh, green market uh, actors. So what remains on our side, and this is the last point that I want to highlight uh, in my brief presentation, on the market side, the EIB uh, is taking forward the idea that it is important to reclassify all, list, all, all classification systems that are in the market according to the scheme. So our experts have, for example, already proposed um, a reclassification of the activities that are mentioned in the use of proceeds section of the Greenbaum principles. And we are going to discuss this uh, at the upcoming AGM of the Greenbaum principles in Hong Kong this year in two weeks time. We have reclassified this in a way that you can see it matches the list of activities that has been retained by the HLEG, like introducing the notion that it is not necessary to have a shared classification system, that everybody adopts exactly the same list of activities. But what you can establish is a kind of a conversion medium, a unity of account that permits to translate any classification into any other. And this is exactly the approach that we are taking together forward with uh, uh, Professor Wang and uh, her team. So if you take this kind of approach as a reference, then you can see that the figures that are projected by CBI uh, in terms of development of this market, whether they will be realized on this timeline or in a longer timeline, uh, is likely because effectively the volume of issuance of green bonds can be taken as an intermediate policy objective since it measures the difference since the difference between the volumes of issuance of green bonds and the volume of issuance of conventional bonds measures the map mappability gap, the gap that exists with regard to economic activities between what can be measured according to the requirements of capital markets and what cannot. And this is a uh, very important element that in Europe is becoming increasingly uh, conscious of. Last point, but I will not comment on this since you are much more expert of, uh, than me uh, of uh, uh, Confucian uh, principles, there is a very famous analect that I have read uh, in which uh, uh, one of uh, Confucius' uh, uh, disciples, Zilu, or Zilu, I don't know the pronunciation, sorry about that, asks, what is the most important element? What would you do, Master, if you uh, were entrusted uh, with the uh, governance of, uh, um, uh, of, the, of the state? Rectify names is the answer. In this area, no uh, carefulness, uh, no carelessness is allowed. Thank you very much for your attention, and um, I hope I've stayed roughly. Really